Hey everybody, welcome to a fantastic video because myself and Alex behind the camera, Alex, say hi. Hey everybody. We are diving into the world of Chinese made electric vehicles. So you've probably heard rumblings online. You've probably heard stories about various companies throughout China starting to work hard on new electric vehicles. And this is one of those vehicles. A company called Hi-Fi is making a car called the Y. And this is a car, Alex, that's going on sale very shortly, right? Yes, apparently this is going on sale in China this Saturday. Yeah, so like three days from now. And in this video, we're gonna answer the simple question, are Chinese made EVs a bit crap? Um, because I think there's this like notion in a lot of the US that car made in China, not gonna be very good. But we're gonna find out, is that true? We're gonna look at the build quality, some of the features, how competitive they are and stuff like range and price. Starting out with the Hi-Fi. Now, Alex, I'll take the camera from you. Sure. Alex, of course, from Auto Buyer's Guide. Alex, what do you think of the design of the Hi-Fi Y? It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Polestar, and I think that's actually probably a good thing. It does have its own unique look. We have this large light bar there, it's really slim LED headlights down here, and then this massive, I'm guessing, turn signal. Who knows what that is there? Uh, also, we were kind of debating Hi-Fi like Wi-Fi is what they said, but then we have the Model Y or version Y or whatever Y we're talking about here. Logo kind of looks like a power button. Yeah, you're right, you're right, it does. Now, size-wise, Alex, this is pretty much on par with the Tesla Model Y. Um, but yep. you know, I gotta say, some of the older Chinese products looked very mm -hmm. much like copycats of other cars on the market. This thing what do you looks think about unique. What do you think about this? Oh Whoa. my god. Not what the regular that? gold wing. I don't know what we're, what we're calling it. A something wing door? That's wild. It's not, it's, maybe it's a sparrow wing because you have a falcon wing, you have the gold wing. Maybe this is a... Uh, Are there no exterior door handles? Is that no the only exterior door get? handles. Just a power button there and then there's a button to power open the front door right over there. What it's if like you, an NFC point. Can you close the door? Can you leave this open? It apparently does. And then if we press the button to try and close the door, that pops back open so that way the top will close. All right, you want to film me here, Alex? I'm yeah, curious. let's see how you fit inside. Am I going to be decapitated when you close the door? Uh-oh. That's, okay. Oh dear. You ready? Yeah. Coming down. Oh, you made it. What's the headroom like in there? Enormous. What's the headroom in the middle? Because that is one problem with the gull wing door like thing is, oh, 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 that's weird. Hang on, let's get the camera it's in there. It's got a scallop. Oh, Look wow. That. that is. <laughs> Can you move your head side to side? No. Oh, wow. Don't do any corners. Don't do it. Wow, that is amazing. Look, if you're on the outside of the seat, though. That, that looks pretty cool. And I have to, you know, honestly, what is cooler looking than this split door thing? Um, you were talking about, is that going to leak? You know, I'm kind of curious because it does look like it's got a lot of water diversion up there. So it looks like that was kind of a consideration. Check this out, though. I was going to take the camera. Yeah. Close the doors for a sec. Close the going. Okay, ready? Yeah. Now there's actually two buttons on the inside. Oh. So there's a button here for the going. Oh, yeah. And there's a button for the standard door. Oh, no. Oh, they, no, they open. That is, that is interesting, yeah. What is this? Is this a button? So what does the other one do? Oh, that just closes the roof. Oh, it just closes the top. So you oh. can have just the door open, too. And you can man you can sort of manually start it, and then it power closes itself. I'm not really sure what this is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe tray table? Is that like a tray little, table there? It's a little broken there. Oh, oh there yeah, a little tray table there, a little airline-style tray table. That's kind of cool. Alex, I'm not sure I'm on board with the purple seat belts. And let's see what the let's see what the front looks like here, because look at look at this. So we got the big screen, huge screen in the dashboard, uh, big expansive glass across the dashboard, huge passenger screen over there. Obviously, this is all running Chinese market software at the moment. One would assume there'd be English market software at some point. Fairly wide instrument cluster over there, and this very square combination touch button and physical button steering wheel. That's kind of cool. What do you think of the angles everywhere? I kind of like the angles. It reminds me a little bit more of the Polestar that's immediately next door to this car, which we should take a look at next, because that's also made in China. Good point, yeah. But Alex, I mean, from a fit and finish standpoint, I know this car is pretty, probably pre-production because this car yeah. doesn't go on sale here in the UK until 2025. Yes, but actually this, this one is pretty good as far as the fit and finish, especially around the doors. Let's look at the door panels here. Yeah, let me get out here. If you, if you can, can you escape? <laughs> uh, also, I must say, I love purple. So purple. You like door, the purple. I love the purple because I just love purple. But look at all the intricacy going on. So you got stitched leather material on yeah. top, perforated, Mercedes-style seat controls. But what I was most impressed with is actually the alignment. Like these stitch lines are pretty difficult to make even. Uh, this is something that not every car company does well. Even Mercedes and BMW can mess that up now and then. And this build quality looks really good. 
and again, very similar to this Polestar that's right next door. Yeah, there's the Polestar. This yeah, which tree, we, I guess right? we'll show you, we show you the front end of that first. Yeah, let's do that. Um, now, Alex, range. They're claiming 115 kilowatt hour battery in the large mm -hmm. side, uh, 800 kilometers, which seems a little ambitious. Yeah, I mean, it is WLTP, We're and WLTP at, is awfully ambitious. What's that, so, 500 plus miles? Yeah, typically versus EPA cycles, you'll lose about 25%. Uh, so UK rated cars in miles, the mile is the same, but by the time it makes it to EPA testing, you lose about 25%. Since our test cycle is more stringent, but still not necessarily real world. So real world's probably going to be, you know, 30% reduction. So this is the new Polestar 3. It is. Now Polestar is a Swedish company, but yes. owned by the Chinese, right? Yes. So a Swedish company uh, that is majority owned by a publicly traded Hong Kong corporation that is majority owned by a Chinese corporation, Geely. Um, and Polestar is half owned by Volvo and half owned by Geely. It's very complicated probably a money laundering scheme who knows but very attractive car I have to say where is the car made car this one is made in China apparently uh, initially but for the North American market it's gonna be built in South Carolina interesting yeah so. I think it's actually a very attractive design let's check out the inside yeah check out that inside I do like that interior I'll make sure the door doesn't hit this other car oh yeah look at that very Swedish Scandinavian on the inside this is the close relative to the new Volvo EX90 looks very good very, very good. But I have to say, overall, Alex, the hi-fi, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, this is definitely more stylish, more adventurous on the style. Whereas the, the Polestar is definitely more conservative, more European in terms of its style, even though, again, it's, you know, definitely a little bit adventurous for the EV segment. So we've seen the hi-fi. Pricing has not been announced. From what I've read from UK outlets, they're predicting about 75,000 pounds starting. Yeah, definitely, definitely makes sense with that interior. Well, we're going to walk over here because we've got a number of other Chinese-made EVs. Yeah, let's get to the funky ones. Well, we're, let's stop at the middle one here. Oh, not, not the funkiest? So Renault, obviously French manufacturer. Yep, yep. MG, you yep. might think is an English manufacturer. It's not. It's, a, it's an English logo. <laughs> on a really cool looking car actually. Look at these headlights in operation. We had that other video where we showed you them during the day, but you can actually see how the lights reflecting off that pattern there, lighting up these individual little elements. That's a really cool touch. I really like that. Yeah, so if you want to see other videos, we got them over at All TFL. Alex and I are here at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Check it some stuff out. Now this is the MG4, starts at about 26,000 pounds. So right around 30 grand US. But uh, this is the second best-selling car in the UK. Second best-selling EV. 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 I'm sorry. EV second best-selling yep. EV. You're right. And this interior. What do you? I like this. This looks much better than that MG that we were in accidentally as a rental car for like a hot second. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like the the software looks not too bad. Maybe a little slow. A little slow. Yeah. The graphics are not horrible, and it's got Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. You got buttons there for volume, and then your drive selector here teeny tiny little instrument cluster very cute predicting 250 miles of range and this by the way is a uh, rear-wheel drive platform yes so rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive and you can get a performance model too 0 to 60 what they say like three something seconds something like that yeah pretty quick okay we got one more to show you though so next up Alex we're taking a look here at the Neo ET5 now is this, uh, is this ET5 home ET5 home Neo is a Chinese manufacturer that's been um, producing vehicles for a while uh, you know, this is not a, something that's super early, really pre-production. This is a car, at least Neos, that you've been able to buy for some time. And let's talk about some of the unique things about Neos. Look at all the cameras and all the sensors and how they're incorporated in these little bubbles on top of the roof. Yeah, look at that LiDAR right in the middle, cameras on the outside. That's a really cool thing. And then this little guy, I will show it on the inside. See the little orb? You can actually oh, yeah. talk to that. Oh. It's a little robot. Oh. So you can ask it to do commands and stuff. But very attractive car. I'm seeing a little Ticon in this, you know? You can also record yourself doing like movies and stuff on the inside, which is honestly a little creepy. Yeah, we'll hop in there in just a second. I'm not sure I go for that. Let's check out the trunk. Yeah, let's check out the rear here. It's really more of a cargo slot, I guess you could say, as far as a trunk goes. Close, uh, close the lid. Of course, with all the cameras around, I think there are a number of Americans that are going to be concerned about the privacy aspect, right? But very attractive rear end, long continuous light bar here. You got the stoplights integrated into the back of the into the back of the Neo. Yeah, and there's that yet another camera there. There's a camera in the middle staring at us. And then of course you got the, the pop-out door handles too. They're actually uh, 
They're touch sensitive. Look at that. Yeah. Are they soft toys? There's some guys up front. See how you fit back there. Let's see how uh, see how four people squeeze in there. Okay. Yeah. Let's give it a go. All right. Doesn't Actually, look too bad in the back. Yeah. Full glass roof too, so it's not super crazy back here. It feels pretty good. We'll I like. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, I really like the seat material. Once again, like the Chinese manufacturers kind of killing it with their, uh, their uh, you know, uh, door panels. This one doesn't feel as premium as the Hi-Fi though. Like the materials don't feel quite as nice. The alignment's pretty good though. All the, all the, all the that, and that's, check out that window switch. That's crazy. You want to hop in the front, Alex, or go on the other yeah, side? Yeah, let's go ahead and see what that's like. Let's check out the front of the Neo. It's right. talking to you. Yeah. The, the little robot spinning around. The little robot spinning I didn't, around. I didn't realize it spun around, but it also blinks, which is kind of interesting. It has this like uh, sort of little hand it's over its mouth. It's got a funny mouth. name. It's yeah. got like Shimi or Shumi. It's got a funny name. Yeah, I don't remember what the name is. Now, but let's check out the build quality. The steering wheel feels pretty good. Looks looks kind of cool with the uh, touch buttons there like you find on a lot of cars. It does look very, very cool. Um, let's go to the home screen here. and uh, This is surprisingly small for some of the other EVs here, don't you think? It doesn't have like the ginormous dash O screen. Nomi. Hi, Nomi. I am here. Oh. Nomi is there, ready to go. Oh, and it's waving. She's there, waving. Waving. Waving at us. That's an interesting shifter right there in the center console. Got a little drive selector there. So um, we got no drive modes here. We got Sport Plus, Sport Eco. I was talking to the PR rep, uh, actually the head of NEO in um, mm -hmm. UK. Uh, no launch date yet, but it's currently in sale in five markets like Norway, Sweden. I missed it. Got it. Can you and say that again? It's just not the UK yet. No thanks, Nomi. I appreciate it. So it's Germany, going. Is that sale for Ger in Germany? Yep. Um, I think it might be in Germany. Yeah, yeah. It is Germany. Oh, oh. Yeah, so it's a number of markets, but it looks cool. I can't find that yep. location. Oh man, we really pissed her off. <laughs> is that Naomi? It is, yeah. Is she related to Alexa? <laughs> she might be. She very well might be. She might be. <laughs> exactly. Tell us a joke. Do you guys like it? What do you think of it in here? I actually love it. I, I love the uh, Neo in the middle. Yeah? Fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah. And it swivels and turns. Yeah, it does. It turns. Blinks. Hey, Nomi. And it looks good yes. from the front. Definitely. There Any we go. Any concern yeah. about a Chinese owned mm. automaker? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we don't want money, well. money to go too I can't China. find but that actually, location. In terms of quality, we've, we've looked at several uh, Chinese cars and we actually think they're superb. They're pretty good. Can yeah, I just ask you if you delete that? <laughs> right, retake it. He's actually very knowledgeable when he doesn't look like a builder. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so, Alex, this is by far the most unique Chinese-made EV here at Goodwood. What are we looking at? It is, and for me, this is the most interesting because it's funky, and they actually put that in the name. This is the Aura Funky Cat. Uh, it's built by Great Wall Motors of China. It's a front-wheel drive, 149 horsepower, sort of mini meets 500 meets, I'm not quite sure what. But you know what? The world doesn't have enough weird cars in it. Uh, even more interesting than the name Funky Cat is the platform name. This is built on the Lemon platform. Yes, I am Sorry. not kidding. The Lemon platform. But take a look at the interior because this is what I'm after. You know, French cars are just not funky anymore. But... I mean, actually, this isn't funky, to be honest. This is really quite nice in here. And again, very mini. Look at these switches. These are very mini switches here in the dashboard. I love this two-tone interior. Got this big two-screen dashboard setup, two-tone steering wheel, um, very modern-looking shifters here in the center console. And you know what? To be honest, I think if they stuck a Fiat logo on this, this would have sold better than all of the Fiats in the U.S. Because look at this back seat. That front seat pretty far back for me. This back seat is absolutely epic. I've got tons of headroom back here, tons of leg room. You could actually fit five people in here, no problem. No air vents, of course. I know a lot of people don't like air vents, but hey, we have a USB port. Wow, so Alex, um, this is such an interesting idea because a retro throwback EV doesn't really exist on the market. Yeah. And pricing goes up to about 32,000, starts at 31,000 pounds, so mid 30s. Yeah, it's not bad. The range. 149 horsepower, about 200 miles of range. Yeah. And then not brought to the UK market, but available in other world markets is a 63 kilowatt hour battery that will theoretically give you over 300 miles of WLTP range. That's pretty impressive actually. So yeah, realistically the sales rep said about 170 miles of range. What do you think of these, these uh, hood bumps? They're weird, they're funky. I like this whole like four bump front end somehow. You know, I think that they made this, they managed to do it funky, but just barely escape weird because that could have turned out weird with some of these styling cues. At, I don't know, I think it's epic. Let's look at the back. Yeah, yeah let's go check out the trunk. Now, Alex, this is the weirdest part for me. This, this 
This is epically French to me somehow. This particular bustle butt style there. Where are the tail lights, um, Alex? The tail down here and up here in the glass boat. <laughs> um, let's pop the back and see what the boot looks oh, like. Oh, we're in, are in England. We got to call it a boot. Uh, what's what's on? Oh. Hey, there's actually storage under there. Look at that. You get your little uh, level level one your, two connector your there. Big big level one connector there. I mean, Alex. Right. What I have to say is, look, even though this look, is probably the at, most look at this, this tiny little thing. What's that for? This is one of the the most maybe derivative of all the design we saw in this video, right? It, clearly, it is indeed. It's a copy of a mini and a Fiat. Let's be but honest. you know what? Let's look at this smart over here for just a second, because this smart I think is funky on the weird side of funky like this front end is there's a lot going on and then if we come around to the side this gives me kind of a hearse vibe like a <laughs> like a landau top in a bad way back here and, there's and it has a very similar lights. kind of bustle butt kind of thing only not as well integrated i think as the uh, the funky cat you so hold this? i want to talk about funky look at the infotainment though in the smart I that mean, is fantastic. Look how berserk this is with this like little little planet thing. Um, if you go to, to the, where is the climate control? There's a deionization where I can actually make this little guy fart somehow. Yeah, yeah. and then you can, you know, clean the air in here. I don't know, it's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere, yeah, um, yeah. But you know what? This is technically, I guess, also a Chinese car because this is built on the new Geely EV platform that is shared with the Volvo EX30. But Mercedes, of course, owns Smart in general. Yeah, and this is a very Mercedes interior. So you can tell that Mercedes did the software. They did all the buttons on the steering wheel. This is very, very smart, very, very Mercedes. Is that a Barabbas logo? On yeah, the this, is, this is the Barabbas Smart EV. Oh, look at that little screen, too, in front of the driver. Yeah. That's really cool. Really cool. So, Alex, I think what we've learned in this video, right, is, you know, American perception of a lot of Chinese EVs is just wrong, at least yeah. on a build quality and initial evaluation. But driving nature, that's something else. We can't talk about it because we haven't driven it. We any haven't of them. driven them. Yeah. Right, good point. But, but from a value yeah. standpoint, I mean, the features per dollar is there. Yep. From a design standpoint, how could you not love that? Exactly, yeah. There's a lot to love here. And you cool. know what? There's all these EVs are in a line here. You know, European EVs. There's a Kia EV9 over there. There's a there's, you Ford, know, a that's Ford actually over a there, Volkswagen. Yeah. Um, you know, Jaguars have been around, et cetera. So you, we can compare the build quality and honestly say that as far as like panel fitment, panel gaps, pretty good. Materials quality, that's a slightly different matter. One thing I will say that I noticed in the MG EVs, the carpet's really super thin. Very thin carpet, yeah. Very thin. But Alex, thank you. Of all the cars you checked out today, which one's your favorite? The Funky Cat. It's <laughs> gotta be the Funky Cat. It's epic. I like I, I like the hi-fi. I do say those doors that the are up right now, those gull wings, it's pretty yeah, funky. Yeah. But you can get two Funky Cats for the price of your hi-fi. So Alex, if folks want to find more of you, where do they go? They can go to Auto Buyer's Guide. We'll find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagrams, all those things. And if you want to see more of the Goodwood Festival of Speed, check out alltfl.com. we got all the coverage here too. See you later.